Engineering, hi Mullen. In today's video we continue making the centre punch centre finder. We started last week making the centre punch, then towards the end of the video we started to make this aluminium body with the o-ring on the end and the holes in the side. Because the diameter of the rod I was using was 15mm which I reduced to 10mm, I had problems seeing through the rod to see where the centre finder was and that's why I drilled these holes in the side to get a little more light in. But at the end of the date it wasn't good enough so I bored out the bore to 15mm and I'm now using a 15mm perspex rod that fits the bore and I've also had to make a new centre punch that's 15mm. So if you're thinking of making one Watch the video at the end of the modifications that I've made and you can see the difference in the light that comes through from the 10mm to the 15mm. So let's go into the workshop and see how we do it. Now on this end I need to fit an o-ring, this is the o-ring I have, it needs to fit on there. I was thinking about making a forming tool and um, forming a recess but I think it's easier just to put a step on the outside. The idea of the o-ring is that if you're on a smooth surface the aluminium could slide and slip so by the time you put your centre punch in you're out of position but the rubber will grip the surface. Come in 2mm and turn a 24mm that diameter. Here's a tip, if you take a Morse taper sleeve and put the rubber o-ring onto it, you can find, it's nearly on the end of that, where it grips. So if I make it as big as this, this diameter is 25 millimetres.
that's okay. 2.6mm from the face, it's a 3mm diameter so it's leaving just over under half a millimetre sticking out which is ample. I just set my boring tool in the tool holder, set the compound slide over to 15 degrees and I just want to start putting a taper in this end to give me clearance to let some light in. left enough width here on the face so that you can take the rubber ring off and you still use the face so all I need to do now is take the sharp edge off on this end now what I'm thinking of doing is drilling some holes through the side to let the light in I've just set up my tool post spindle It's held in the tool post, can move in and out and I can fix a electric drill on the end and it will rotate. So I've set the chuck to centre line and what I want to do on the job is drill three holes in this side here so that the light can get through. I've set the compound slide at an angle of 105 which should be 90 degrees to the bore that I've just put in there of 15. So what I want to do first is use an end mill in the drill spindle and machine it so that it produces a flat at that angle so then when I come to drill it I'm drilling on a surface that's 90 degrees to the end of the drill so the drill will go in and not try and go down this slope. Now to get the spacing right I only want three holes so I'll use a chuck jaw to give me the spacing. All I've got is a piece of sheet plate I'll put that under the on the bed turn it so the chuck jaw touches the plate put the lathe in back gear that makes it a lot harder to move the chuck. So I'll move the cutter into position. About there. So it's just missing the chuck. I can turn it round to the next position using the chuck jaw again centre drill. Now I can centre drill onto a flat face. You can see there I have a centre drill mark in the middle.
So here's the finished item. It's the Perspix I have. It's 15mm diameter and it has some cling film wrapped around it to protect it. So I think I'll leave the cling film on, just put it in the 3 jaw chuck and we'll start to machine it. Now the acrylic needs to come from the end to this face. I need to turn that back to 10mm. Now because I've put a centre drill hole in the end, I'll have to face about 3mm off that end when I finish so I can get this end without any holes in it. It needs to be perfectly flat so I can polish it up. Cut it off about here with the saw and then put this back in the chuck and clean that up. I've cut this off longer than I need. doing at the moment is polishing the end. I've got some very fine wet and dry and this is some car scratch remover which is very fine. You should be able to take all the scratches out. You can see that. And I've done the same on this end which is just flat at the moment. Take most of the scratches out and the turning marks. So it's like a rod clear at each end, and now I can see straight through the. This is the finished centre finder body. I've put the O ring on there. I put these holes in, and the idea of that was to let light through the side so you can see where you're placing your center finder center punch that we did in part one that drops into the center and I've left plenty of room on the end so if this pins over I can always machine it back a bit now without the rubber ring on the bottom you can see this will move and slide on the paper if I fit the rubber ring, now you can see the paper moves with the part so it holds the part in place. There we go. You can see the cross at the bottom. The cross was made by using a sharp tool in the lathe and just going across the face turning the chuck 90 degrees and going back across the face again and then the, it was made red by putting some red felt tip pen into the groove it had made. Now let's see how this works. Okay if you look down the centre finder you can see the red cross. What I'll do is I'll just turn it round It's lined up with the hole, move the body across, take the centre finder out, put the centre punch in, you can see the spot there, right in the middle. 
line it up with the lens center punch in some changes to make it better my mark 2 version the difference being the bore size is 15 millimeters the reason for that is I had difficulty seeing the crosshair on this one because by the time I've machined it down it was 10 mil so this time I've used the same 15 mil perspex no machine just face off each end and polish up mark the cross on which you can see quite easily from that and I've used an o-ring just to when it goes in it stops just before the bottom hits the material that you're looking at Okay, that's looking down the center finder now if we put the lens in you can see the cross a lot easier than the other one I couldn't see it very well on the other one uh, being a bigger diameter there's more light getting in so what I would recommend if you're making one of these you need at least a 15 millimeter perspex rod the bigger the better really you don't need to put the holes around the outside they do make some difference but you can see even if I cover the holes around the outside it doesn't make any difference here because the light there's enough light getting in the top to bounce back where with the smaller version look at that you can see the, see the cross at the bottom I'll do this one put the cross where your center punch mark should be I turn this round then and just check it's okay both ways crosses in the center the center punch in tap it with the hammer and that's the one I just did if you want to make one of these center finders start with a 15 mil perspex rod it is worth putting an o-ring on because even on this look you can see when I move it it moves a whole lot where if I didn't put an o-ring on take it off you can move it anywhere and it's not gripping so you might move it just as you're swapping the lens over the o-ring on the end I definitely put on if you machine it too small and it doesn't grip just put some super glue on and push it down it's only the friction you're trying to get it doesn't do anything other than that it needs to be just proud of the surface of the finder so that it touches the o-ring um, the lens just perspex rod this other o-ring just when you drop the lens in it just hits the top there and stops that lens hitting the part that you're looking at if you have a bigger rod then this one's 15 millimeters if you go bigger with the rod you would be able to turn it like that and have a, a lens on the top and a, a shoulder so if you get a 18 or 20 mil perspex rod you can turn it down to 15 and the shoulder would stop it going down the center punch obviously whatever size hole you make you have to make the center punch bigger so this is my center punch for this it's um, just under 15 millimeter in fact that's the thing I should point out be careful with the perspex rods because although they say they're 15 mil it comes out to under 15 mil so if you drill and ream a hole for the 15 mil and you're not machining the perspex you will find it's too the holes too big um, so you have to take the material for your center punch and machine it down to make sure it's a 
good fit in the, the finder. Cross in the middle, cross is there for the, the cross, take the lens out, put the centre punch in, tap it. You see the centre punch mark, centre of the cross where you wanted it. Oh well, that's it for today. Hope that was useful. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time on Enox Engineering.